Hello everyone, my name is Celeste Horgan, I'm a senior technical writer at the CNCF, uh, and this is Writing for Developers, Take Your Project Docs to the Next Level. Um, so let's start with a fun fact. About 50% of responses to the query, how to choose a development framework on Stack Overflow, mention documentation in the response. Um, Full disclosure, this is a pretty rough estimate done by me. I uh, spent some time Googling how to choose a dev framework, how to choose a DevOps tech stack, etc. Uh, and combed through the responses by hand. Um, but the vast majority of them do mention um, speed of learning, availability of documentation, um, and how many responses something receives on Stack Overflow. Um, so this is a bit of a call to arms for you. Um, this talk is really aimed at documentation maintainers um, as well as new contributors. So CNCF is a community of open source projects um, and it's really, really great that it's here. Um, but as far as an open source project goes, there is no dedicated support team, there is no sales team, and there are no dedicated technical writers, unlike in a private company. Um, this is not to call out any of the partner organizations that we work with because um, what those partner organizations do staff is amazing and we thank them for it. Um, it's more to say that the work that gets done is what the community chooses to contribute to. Um, and if we don't choose docs, the docs don't get done. And there are consequences for that. As we saw previously, um, people look for projects that are well documented especially in open source, because they don't have a company to fall back on. So it's really important that those docs are well maintained. Um, so this is a talk not necessarily about documentation maintenance, though. It's about how to become a really great documentation writer. And I think we can borrow some ideas from English literature in our uh, journey to become a great writer. So this is the hero's journey. Uh, it represents an archetypal story. Um, in English literature, we think of the idea that most stories tend to follow a few different archetypes with a few different um, variations. The hero's journey is a really common one. Your hero um, is given a call to adventure. They meet a mentor. They go through some trials and tribulations. And through those, they gain the skills um, to return to their homeland uh, and, and vanquish an evil that they were maybe unable to conquer before their journey. Um, so they return triumphant, but invariably changed by their experience. Um, and the hero's journey really applies to our user's journey as they go through the documentation. Um, so we'll be using this as a bit of a framing device to talk about how to write good docs from your user's perspective. Um, so let's start at the beginning, the call to adventure. Little Red Riding Hood is a great example of what your user is thinking as they approach your documentation. So famous story, Little Red Riding Hood is a very dutiful young woman. Uh, she's going to bring her grandma some food and she has a bit of a walk through the forest to get there. Um, I think this is, I don't think this is a story that people are unfamiliar with. Um, when we think about this in terms of documentation, then we can take away exactly one thing, which is your user always has a goal, and your first task is to understand what that user goal is. Um, if your user were perfectly clever and smart and wonderful, um, they would have no reason for coming to the documentation. Invariably, though, they're here, and now we need to understand why, so that we understand what we need to write. Um, there's a few different ways that you can go about learning what your user's goals are. The first is obviously talking to your users. Um, if you have community managers or DevRels or product managers or program managers, these are great people to start identifying that user need. Um, but not every project has those. Uh, so another way to go about this is to keep track of questions that have been asked repeatedly or keep track of bugs that seem to come up time and time again in the Slack channel. Um, what this usually indicates is a need that a lot of people are facing, and if you write that down, you're going to have pretty effective documentation for some subset of your users. Um, the final thing you can do is 
as you're planning your development story, ask yourself what the documentation is going to look like. Um, one of the hardest parts about writing documentation is that as you develop something, you become such an expert in the thing that you're creating that it's hard to zoom back out and think about what it would be like for a beginner. Um, so if you can bring that part forward, that zooming out forward to before you start your development, um, you'll have a much better picture of what somebody needs to know than you will at the end. Um, so this is what I want to talk, and I really want to talk about new contributors as well though, which is you are invaluable to the development process for documentation for people here. Um, because you have the beginner's eyes where, as we just mentioned, it's really easy to lose those as somebody who's working on a project. Um, so there's a number of different things that you can do that are really, really helpful to project maintainers. Um, the first is to submit GitHub issues and to open documentation PRs. Um, I have not met a project to date which is unhappy to receive a documentation PR, um, provided that the content is well-rounded and focused. Um, the next thing that you can do is to start talking to the project team and say, hey, well, I was trying to execute on this use case or this scenario. Would this be a good tutorial? Would this be a good blog post? And maybe start working with them. Um, and the third thing is to cherish your beginner's mindset. I think that people are often a little bit afraid to approach open source maintainers with questions. And to be perfectly clear, the maintainers don't owe you an answer. Um, however, you only get to be a beginner once, and sometimes those questions are invaluable and super useful to those maintainers in creating good content. So don't be afraid um, of asking that question, and don't assume that you're the only person who's having that problem because in most cases, there's somebody else as well. Um, so let's talk about all, some common user goals for documentation. Um, in general, uh, these are ones that I've seen come up in my career over and over and over again. So I think I'm pretty confident in saying uh, that they're, they're in play here for Cloud Native. Um, so some common user goals when somebody's looking at the docs. Um, evaluating new tech stacks to implement at their company. Uh, this is surprisingly common um, and a super underserved need in most documentation sets. Um, most companies don't have great feature lists um, for their projects and most open source projects don't have great feature lists either. Um, people look at your documentation to evaluate whether this is something they want to use or not. Um, another thing that's really common is sort of learning, just generally speaking, like they're, they've started to use your project at work and now they need to be an expert in it overnight. Um, passing certification exams is another big one. Um, supporting an existing system. We are super lucky here at um, the CNCF in that Cloud Native is becoming super ubiquitous. And that means there are a lot of people looking at your documentation, supporting your thing in production. Um, and finally, somebody's developing a new feature for their own company um, and they are looking at your documentation to solve a specific problem that they are currently facing. Um, so the great thing is that documentation can meet all of these needs and more. Um, when we talk about evaluating text apps, concept docs are invaluable in that regards. Um, in regards to general learning to supporting um, existing system, API references are super useful. Um, once again, on sort of passing cert exams, tasks and tutorials and cookbooks um, are a huge reference for that particular audience. And um, for the person who really just needs the answer to something specific, um, generally being well organized in your documentation or having good information architecture as well as making your docs really searchable um, is super helpful to the person who wants to do that. So we've been talking at a high level now and so let's let's dive a little bit deeper. Um, our hero has heard the call to adventure, they are in your docs, they want to find the solution to their problem or the end means to their goal. Um, and now they enter this middle stage of the hero's journey. They're facing trials and failure. Um, so this is a Greek vase depicting Hercules slaying the Hydra. Um, Hercules is 
His story is famous for the many trials that he had to go through to regain his godliness. Um, but in each of those trials, he had to acquire new skills and gain new competencies in order to accomplish his goals. And your user is exactly the same. We need to give them the skills with documentation. Because as I mentioned, um, for an open source project, there is no support team for that. There is no sales team. There is no marketing team. It has to come from the docs. So luckily, as a technical writer, um, I can tell you how to explain anything you ever want ever um, and how to do it really, really well. All it takes are three simple parts. First, you have to explain the concept of something to people at a very high level. What is this thing? What does it do? And why do I, your user, care? The next is a task. So, okay, I understand your thing now. Now, how do I use it? I have a goal. I want to accomplish my goal. How do I use it? And can you tell me about any pitfalls I might run into along the way? Finally, um, I'm a user. I think I know how to accomplish my goal after all those tasks, um, but my goal might be slightly different than the one that you mentioned in the task. So you need to give me some reference documentation. Show me all the things that your thing can do. Um, and then I'll decide which of those functionalities I need to use to solve my problem. Um, and between these three styles of writing, you can explain anything. Um, so let's dive into those in a bit more detail. So concepts. Concept topics explain a feature at a high level. You can always tell a concept topic um, because they tend to use a very standard sentence construction, which is blank is a blank, which does blank. Um, it's almost always the first sentence in a concept topic, and that's how you know you're there. Um, in general, concept topics briefly describe or link to other topics uh, related to the feature at hand, um, and they describe why a user might care about a feature or what the common use cases for using something are. Once again, I'm a user and I have a goal, and I only care about that goal, so tell me whether this thing you're describing is going to meet that goal or not. Um, so to give an example, uh, these are from the Bates documentation and they're describing a cell. And you can see that sentence in the very first sentence. A cell is a group of servers and network infrastructure, dot, 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 which typically does dot, dot, dot. Um, in the second and third paragraphs, we start describing and linking to other concepts that somebody might need to know. Um, and further on, it's a bit cut off in this screenshot we start talking about what the common use cases might be. The second component of really great documentation or tasks, and in many ways, this is kind of the meat of the sandwich. Um, tasks describe what a user can do with a feature. Um, you can always tell you're in a task topic when you start seeing things listed out step by step by step. They'll often use numbered or bulleted lists. Um, another sort of good flag for knowing you're in a task topic um, is you see a lot of code samples. Um, so anything that has like CRUD functionality, create, read, update, delete, um, will typically end up being in a task topic. Uh, and you can also sort of tell you're in a task topic if the top, the, the title of the page has a verb in it or starts with the verb, um, because these are about doing. Um, there are lots of different styles of task topics. A numbered list is just one of them. Um, tutorials are another type of task topic. Um, cookbooks are a very, very focused sort of task, which is this is the specific use case and the specific code you need to do it. Um, and similarly, sort of example apps, broadly speaking, fall under the idea of a task because you are trying to help somebody accomplish something. Um, one thing to caution uh, particularly around kind of fully featured sample code like sample apps and cookbooks um, is as much as you think or want to feel uh, that the code should speak for itself and it's standalone, I promise you it isn't. I promise you it isn't. Um, at a minimum, you need to describe to people how they can take the code from GitHub, put it on their computer and make it work. Um, but in general, um, at the very least, commenting your way through a sample app is a really, really great way to help your users out. 
Um, so back to the test stocks for an example. Um, installs and quick starts are almost always test topics. Um, and once again, the Vitesse talks uh, do a really great job of showing that. Kind of third paragraph in, we've got a code sample and the rest of the page continues in this fashion. So the very last type of topic that you need to describe anything um, often seems like the least glamorous and often ends up being the most important, particularly if you're, you're in a pinch. Uh, and this is reference. So references provide lists of all options for a feature. Um, the one you might be most familiar with are API references, which describe all endpoints um, and accepted data for a feature. Um, another one are Javadoc style uh, documentation, um, descriptions of command line interface flags and what each one of them do. Um, often these are auto-generated from code, though not always. Um, and the thing to keep in mind when creating reference topics is that completeness and accuracy is the most important thing to a good reference topic, um, which is why they're often auto-generated from code. Um, people are, are surprisingly forgiving of a task topic that maybe has one step which is inaccurate. Um, but reference documentation is where you often go when something is not working the way it should um, and you need to sort of troubleshoot your way through it, which means if the reference is not accurate, it's very, very frustrating to your most frustrated users and you will hear about it. So a great example of how to manage complex reference topics uh, via auto generation was um, executed by our one of our Google Season of Docs interns last year. So shout out to Philippe for doing amazing work on this uh, because now the Kubernetes docs are auto-generated directly into our Hugo site. So we have our concepts, which explain things at a high level. Uh, we have references, which um, explain things in quite a bit of detail. And you have tasks, which explain specific tasks something somebody wants to do. Um, Great documentation almost always has all three types. Um, you rarely see any of them alone. So to give an example of what that might look like, let's take another look at Prometheus's documentation and we're gonna zoom in on this querying section. So this first topic under querying basics, that's the concept topic. This is where they're describing what is querying, how does it work, etc., etc. Um, operators and functions are a mix of concept and reference. So they explain what an operator is and then what operators are available. So that's the reference part. And similarly, they explain what functions are and what functions are available. Um, next, they have examples, which when you click into this specific page, um, is really a, a bunch of very short tasks. Um, and finally, they have an, an HTTP API reference. Um, all three types of documentation complement each other and they really shouldn't exist in isolation. So this is a great execution of that idea. So let's let's head back to our hero's journey for a second. We've got an, our users gone on an adventure um, and we've given them new skills. And if we've done our jobs well, now they can go back to the thing that they're working on and they can achieve their goal. They can solve their problem. Um, so they're in this part of the hero's journey. They have had a change, they've received a gift, and they are returning. So much like Jack here, so this is an image from Jack and the Beanstalk, by the way, um, which if you don't remember the plot, uh, a, a giant has been stealing things from Jack's family for quite some time. So he uh, is given some magical beans, um, he, he plants them and grows large beanstalk, and then he takes his stuff back from the sleeping giant, um, and he sneaks off. And that's what your user's doing at this point in the journey as well. You, they have what they need, but is that the whole story? Because again, if you've uh, read Jack and the Beanstalk anytime recently, the story doesn't end with Jack sneaking off. Great documentation shows its users where to go next. Um, and it does this at a number of different scales. So 
You can organize the entire doc set along a user flow, which is what is the beginning for your user, the middle, and the end. Um, but it also does it at a much smaller scale, which is in an individual piece of writing. So within that document, um, the beginning is usually the concept, and then the middle is some task topics, and then the end is a reference. Um, but what comes after the reference when you've imparted all the knowledge that you need? Um, some well curated learn more links never go out of style. Um, asking for feedback is, we found it marginally useful in the Kubernetes community, but I, I wouldn't re-implement this on a new site. Um, but never assume that your user's journey is done just because they've reached the end of the page. Um, by way of wrapping things up and to bring this back kind of for the new contributors, documentation is a team sport. Um, new contributors and end users are kind of key to great documentation. Um, and to kind of bring it back to Hercules uh, in this vase, you'll notice on the left hand side, Hercules actually has a friend here. Um, so while Hercules is out front fighting the Hydra, his friend is helping at the back. And that's what you can do for project maintainers as a new contributor. Um, as I mentioned before, it's really easy to get super deep into something and super technical and suddenly lose sight of what it's like to be a new user. Um, so a great way to start contributing to open source and to start contributing to cloud native communities is to start opening documentation tickets because they don't assume they'll know. Um, and your contribution could be really valuable in that regards. So thank you very much for your time, everybody. It has been lovely to chat docs with you. Um, I will be around at the end of this presentation to ask some questions live. Um, here's where you can find me. Um, if you want to get involved with um, CNCF Project looking for docs help, join us at the CNCF Tech Docs office hours. Um, if you're a maintainer, look out for the emails telling you where these are gonna be. Um, I and the other technical writers here at the CNCF hold monthly meetings where you can ask us any question about documentation you want and we'll try and help you out as best as you can. Um, if you are a new writer and you're looking to help out, um, I encourage you to drop into a project's community meetings um, and see whether it's to see. Um, if you're looking for something a little more structured, Kubernetes SIG Docs is our biggest documentation community and they are the most well equipped to help new um, contributors. And if you want to talk more at me, I'm going to be hanging around in the CNCF Slack for another little while after this talk. And you can find me on Twitter at Celeste Horgan. Thank you so much for your time.